Welcome, I'm Rob Funny, and I'm about to show you how to use PCB New in KiCAD to create your printed circuit board. I'm assuming you've already created a schematic in KiCAD. If you haven't, you can look at our previous videos. Uh, this is the schematic we created of the attenuator circuit. And uh, we were very careful to include uh, footprints with each part. If you look here, if you type E for edit, you can see that there's a footprint for that part right there, as well as a datasheet uh, URL and so on. And so this uh, schematic is ready for exporting a netlist. So we uh, click this netlist generator here. We generate the netlist, uh, save it. And the netlist tells KiCAD's PCB new where all the connections need to be made. Now we start PCB new, which is KiCAD schematic editor. Yes, we create a new uh, a new file. Maybe the first thing you want to do here is you want to edit your uh, title block. You can uh, put your uh, date of uh, um, creation in here, your revision number, um, 0 0.1, maybe uh, title. This is the attenuator and uh, your company. can't type, etc. Your, your name. You probably want to put your name on the PCB too because if we send out uh, P multiple PCBs it's nice to know whose is whose. We want to check the, the size here and use US letter. So that's uh, the uh, title block. The next thing to do is read in your netlist. So let's read the netlist here. Read the current netlist. And when you do this, you want to double check to make sure there's no red errors down here. It looks all green, so we're good. We can close the netlist uh, box. And here are all our parts right here. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to place the parts on the printed circuit board. I'm going to go up here and, and select a grid. 0.5 millimeters is probably a good grid. I'm going to select a grid, I'm going to zoom in on this, and I'm going to start moving parts around. So I'm going to move this uh, J2 over to the right. So let's put him uh, kind of over here for right now. And maybe we can move J1 over that direction and uh, make him about the same distance. Um, actually, yeah, probably we'll just make him line up about the same way here. Right on that line. And then we need to take these uh, resistors and we need to uh, rotate them into place. I need to select the whole resistor footprint like that. So rotate, rotate, that looks better. Let's do the next one here. Rotate, rotate, that looks a little better. Um, let's select these two resistors. Well, let's, let's do this resistor here too. We need to uh, rotate move, probably put him like right in the middle of these two, kind of. And uh, let's uh, let's take all these resistors. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. I want to make a box around the whole thing. And I want to M for move, so I'm going to move these down right about there, I guess. And then what I want to do, uh, maybe I'd uh, like to um, remove them. Well, that's pretty good. We could move them down just a tad more. Um, that's a little straighter. Let's try and do that for both of these. Um, okay, that's pretty good. Now I'd like to route the board. So you go over here and you select the uh, routing thing here. And uh, then you basically uh, connect these things. But before I do that, I need to set the uh, default track width and the other track uh, design rules. You do that in the design rules um, menu here. And and when you go there, you you, you need to know uh, how far the uh, what the track width needs to be, what the clearance is, and all those kind of things. 
So you generally you go to your PCB manufacturers. I use allpcb.com and so I went to all PCB and went to the PCB capabilities here and it has the information you need here about your design rules. It's things like the minimum trace 0.125 millimeters, the minimum spacing 0.125 millimeters and things like that. So that's the the kind of thing you need to enter in your design rules. For me, I want my track width to be one millimeter here, so I'm going to change this to one millimeter, and that's because I want uh, I want uh, a, uh, a 50 ohm uh, trace, and I used uh, previously the PCB calculator to find that out. So that's so I'm just going to do everything with one millimeter. I'm just changing the default, so I'm going to say OK. But in general, you might want to set up different rules for different kinds of nets here. So now I, I'm going to go from this uh, connection to that uh, that uh, resistor, and from this resistor to that resistor, and then I'm going to connect all the grounds all the way around. I'm going to start right here, connect to there, connect this ground to this ground, connect this ground to that ground. Just follow the white wires, and um, you can connect all these things. And this is a pretty easy printed circuit board to route here, as you can see. But uh, in general, what you want to do is on one side of the circuit board, you route uh, horizontal traces, and on the other side, you route vertical traces. Looks like we still have uh, a couple to, to do there, but let me just demonstrate here. Suppose I thought I was done. If I do this design rules check here, and I do this uh, DRC here, it says everything's good except there are some unconnecteds here, so I want to check that. No, I don't want unconnected, so it says I still need to route something. So basically, what it's telling me is I need to route this guy to there, and I need to write this guy down to uh, to here, and now we probably have them all, all connected. Let's check with the design rule check. So there we are, and uh, looks good there, and looks good, no unconnected. So... <clears throat> Next thing we want to do is we want to put in a uh, an edge cuts. Uh, that's the edge of the board. So we click on the edge cuts down here, and you click on this little add graphics line. So this is going to detail or show where the edge of the board is. I'm just going to draw right around the edge of where I want my board to be, and uh, just like this. Let's make a little box. And depending on what your PCB designer will do, you might you might not have to have a box. You know, it might mean you could do all kinds of funny stuff. Okay, so now I've got the edge cuts on there. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a flood fill. So I'm going to go to the copper layer. I'm going to click on the flood fill add icon, and I'm going to I'm going to basically go around those same edge cuts and fill everything in with a flood fill of copper with the ground connection. So I click here. And that says I'm doing the front copper. I want to connect it to ground, and I want to want to make this um, basically all ground uh, everywhere except where those traces are. And even the traces that are ground will get uh, flooded with copper. Um, so go up here and you double click at the end can zoom in if you need to there you see I've got a nice uh, I've got a nice ground plane there let's put one on the back side too so I'm gonna do black copper I'm gonna do ground and I'm just gonna say okay and so I'm gonna click around the same way I just did to make the back copper and um, double click to end and now we've got uh, the back copper connected. So now let's take a look in the 3D viewer and see how this looks. So here it is in the 3D viewer. You can right click on this and rotate it around and see the other side if you like. Now one thing I use the 3D viewer for is to check all the silk screen and, and there's some problems on the silk screen here. First of all I don't like the way R2 is kind of running into R1. I don't like having J1 outside the board and J2 outside the board, so let's go fix those. So we go out here and we uh, select the silk screen layer. I'm just going to type, uh, hover over this and type M for move, and put it right down in the middle. Um, 
I'd like to see the silkscreen layer. So there we are. Click on that. We can see it. Okay, so now I'm going to type this one and move him down in here. Okay, so I've got J1 and J2. I will be able to see those before I put these um, connectors on. Once I put the connectors on, it really doesn't matter. I don't care then. Let's take this R2 here. Let's rotate it. And let's move it. Move it kind of down, down here, I guess. Something like that. Let's take R1 and let's move him up here. Let's take R3 move him up here and uh, now it's uh, probably looking a little bit better let's look at the, uh, um, the 3D viewer oh yeah that looks much better now we probably ought to add some text on there that says this is our board so let's go back here and let's go we're on the silkscreen layer let's go to text and let's just add a text um, well, let's just call this attenuator. And it was a 6 dB attenuator. Okay, I don't need that. I just need to say okay. Um, well, uh, maybe what we should do is put this on the other side. Let's change to the back side, back silk screen, and let's... let's uh, Click this and put it on the back silk screen. I want to put it on the back silk screen. Uh, okay, let's select it. Okay, escape. I'm going to select it like this. I want to move it to the back silk screen, so I type F for flip. Now I want to uh, move it down because it's. I'm going to put that right here. This is going to be uh, still going to be too big. I think I need to change the, the size of the font, so I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to E for edit it. I'm going to make it uh, 1 millimeter and 1 millimeter instead of what it was, 1.5. And let's see, the thickness will be too large. Okay, it's going to automatically fix that. So this looks like it will um, fit on the other side, so you'll be able to see that on the other side. I don't care about these coaxial connector um, text because we're not, that's not going to show up on the printed circuit board. So at this point, I think we're probably ready to make uh, Gerber files for sending off to uh, the manufacturer. So you go up here to the plot icon and you double, double check your DRC to make sure everything's still good and uh, you'll notice that everything is still good so that's good then we want to make the Gerbers in a special directory I'm gonna call them uh, Gerbers I guess it's I already made it normally you might have to create the folder with Gerbers but it's still there and I uh, guess I want a relative path so I want to plot all these things front copper back copper front paste back paste front silk back silk front mask back mask and edge cuts I don't want the uh, the front courtyard the margins the fab layers or the drawings layer uh, any of that kind of stuff um, so uh, we could plot this and then you need to double check that there's no errors here it looks good you can close that if we wanted to know how big our layer was, we could go to the front fab layer and we could click on this uh, little uh, measurements icon and you can find out how big the thing is. Looks like it's 30.5. You could do a similar thing over here for the uh, other dimension if you wanted. Uh, I need to make sure that's actually right on there and then you pull it out and then you can zoom out and see it's 11.5. So anyway, probably ought to save this and then you're basically ready to send it off to the printed circuit board uh, manufacturer. I hope this was helpful.